How's it going, everybody? I hope everybody's amazing. John Burton here from Asphalt Kingdom, and I have the one and only, a man who I tremendously, tremendously respect. Known him a very long time. We've worked together, and I've, I'm really, really excited to be bringing Mr. Lee Kuhn, the president of Rhino Works, on our live stream today to talk about something absolutely exciting. What I'll do before we go ahead and, uh, and get into this, I'll go ahead and introduce you. A lot of people are going to pop on here as the stream carries on. But uh, without ado, Mr. Lee Kuhn, thanks for being here, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, it's really exciting. Really exciting to have you on here. I know, I know how, how important this video is going to be for a lot of people and, and not just the video, but also I think, you know, actually for people to understand truly, truly why you continue to innovate and be super creative and being able to solve problems. And we'll get into all of that. I'll go ahead and share this out to, uh, to a variety of different places and we'll get this going right away. Just bear with me here. Lee, why don't you tell, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and you know what, where you come from, your kind of background and then where things yeah, are going sure. to. So, I mean, I think, uh, I think a few guys know my story, but for the for guys that don't, I'll uh, I'll kind of bring it up to speed in in as short of a time frame as I can. So, I uh, my my I'm a third generation asphalt guy. Um, I'm the first generation that said screw it to the trade and said I'm going to build stuff and sell it to guys that do it instead of actually continuing to do it as a career. So, um, my grandfather was a career paver. My dad followed the same footsteps. And then uh, from the time I was a teenager, I spent a lot of time on uh, on my dad's kind of crew in, in, in working from my first job up until I was around 17. And uh, then I, uh, I argued with him like hell and told him I could do a better job than, than what he could do. And uh, I ended up going on my own and I started, uh, that's when I started doing seal coating. So I started, started that from the time I could drive, um, from the time I was 17. By the time I was 18, we were producing anywhere from 30 to 40 residential driveway seal coat jobs a day. Kind of figured out how to mass produce what my old man never uh, never did. And uh, got a lot of sunburns. I'm pale as shit, so I burn. And I'm, I'm basically translucent, so sun and me are not friends. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my starting point. That's uh, and, and during that time, I kind of I was exposed to a variety of different pieces of equipment. I mean, I'm not going to say that I became an expert on on running any one thing, but that that was my exposure, right? Like that's that's what kind of brought me on to different types of of asphalt maintenance and different techniques, and made me realize just how much of this industry is just a massive. Um, it's just such. It's there's no real good solutions for everything. It's very much a glue and duct tape industry. You know, like whatever solution you can figure out on the fly is what's got to work for that day if something breaks. And um, yeah, so that's because I'm sort of my backstory with asphalt. I, uh, I left asphalt for like 10 years to get involved with my import company. And in that business, I, I met a lot of different manufacturers. Um, I, I have a parts business for anyone that doesn't know the, the side, kind of my side, my side piece that is roughly 25 million a year. It's, it's the big brother to Rhino Works. Um, not as passionate about the parts business as I am about Rhino Works, but it's, uh, it's what pays the bills. And um, yeah, anyways, that parts business, I, I got introduced to literally a, about 50 different vendors over the course of the last decade. Um, really skilled vendors, some, some in Canada, some in the U.S., and many in Asia, which has had a, a bad rap lately. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that's kind of given me the capacity to, to really find partners to mass produce product. Um, Rhino Works is an engineering and, like, a design and sourcing and distribution company. So, you know, we do do assembly, but a lot of our welding, our general fab, that is outsourced to a combination of Canadian suppliers uh, as well as American and Asian suppliers. And we kind of bring the final product together, you know, everything, the final delivery, the final assembly, all those pieces are an in-house part. So that's, um, that's basically my story in a nutshell and it continues to evolve. Uh, obviously I'm learning. And uh, I guess the one thing I would say with Rhino works that really excites me is it's the business that I get to come into every day. 
and it, it, it's really fun to solve problems and and look for look at the feedback that we get i mean not all of it's rosy but listen to the genuine feedback that comes back um, and then try to formulate real solutions that solve people's problems. Um, the, the first melter that we released was the first melter with an internal burner. Um, I kind of look at our new elite that we're about to launch and it's sort of like, you know, it's like going from an iPhone one to an iPhone 12. Like we've baked in every ounce of feedback that we practically could over the last five years of listening. And we've had a chance to architect something really cool. So, you know, it's, it, what I'm hearing here is I'm hearing a lot about solving problems. So in, in life, you know, we, we're always presented with adversity and challenges, and there's things that, that ultimately make, you know, their challenges towards being more efficient, more effective, and being able to be extremely, you know, productive. Obviously, you know, we're very limited on the amount of time that we have in, in life. So when, when you say solve problems, can you give us maybe a sublist of what solving problems means to you? Yeah, I think it's about Im improving the life experiences for everyone that supports our business and uses our equipment. So, I mean, you know, a, a simplified example is, you know, how, being on a job site and not having the right tool to do a job. You know, everyone can relate to that. It's like having to drive midway and get a screwdriver because you're missing it. Um, so, I mean, part of it is just it's enhancing the overall experience for for the guys that use our equipment in the field, you know, and, and trying to think about actual pro, you know, actual problems that, that everyone faces and look at practical solutions for those problems. You know, how, what can we do to, to save time? What can we do, whether, it, whether it's melting product faster, whether it's looking at um, enhancing the features on a machine to make it easier. Because, I mean, everyone knows when you go from being an owner-operated business where you're the only guy on the crew, well, you're also the smartest guy on the crew typically. You know, when you scale and you got 10, 15, 20 guys, you don't have a good training platform in place. Um, unless something's intuitive, that can create a lot of problems, you know. So things like that. I mean, um, safety is obviously a big one for us, you know, trying to design products that are safe, that are, you know, that are simple, and that ultimately are productive. I mean, that's sort of been our, our thing and it's, it's what continues to drive us. Safety, reliability, productivity, and ease of use. Those are the four pillars of RhinoWorks. Everything we think about from a design perspective um, and when we're creating things, you know, follows that same question, same line of questions. And, and these are not being created because you feel or think that they need to be created. I mean, you always do your best to innovate and create, but at the same time, the, the, the feedback that comes from the actual users, I know that you take to heart. Like I can see you on social media and you and I communicating on social media with other customers who might have dealt with challenges, right? And I think listening is such an important thing in this business. And there hasn't been a whole lot of listening and and I've certainly seen you, like this product that we're about to showcase right now is its first, literally the, it's coming up right here. We're going to launch this product on a pre-sale. And this buildup has been an evolution, right? There's been an evolution that's taken place really from where things used to be years and years ago. And for such a long period of time, they were so plateaued where it, there was no more innovation. There was no more creativity that was taking place. There was a torch fired melter. The torch blew in horizontally, obviously from a logical standpoint, a horizontal heating flame is never going to heat as well as a vertical flame. The other thing that was always happening was those torch melters were blowing out all the time. Anytime you got into somewhat windy conditions, which not only was a, was a productivity issue because of the time wasted in having an extinguished flame, getting down on your hands and knees, putting the torch back in, but also a safety issue on backflash. And so I, you know, I remember back when it used to be the MA-10 way back when, and that machine did a good job for a very long period of time, but people kept complaining about these same things over and over. And so congratulations on being the, the, the one in the company who has ultimately listened to what the contractors were, were saying. And it hasn't been always, you know, this hasn't been an easy journey, but finally things are getting to the point now where through this evolution, the best, most productive push melter applicators literally being introduced right now. And I know, I know this very, very well. And for a fact, 
a tremendous amount of engineering has gone into this based upon the listening that's been done with the contractor. This is not something that was fabricated in a garage and welded together. It's way beyond that. And so can you give a little bit of insight and information about kind of your team there and, and what, what it takes to actually build a machine that we're about to introduce and put on, put on pre-sale? Yeah, so you know, for, the, for the elite, this has been around, I'm going to say since 20, honestly, since the launch of the first RY10 Pro in 2015, when we first launched that burner design, we started hearing feedback. You know, and and we got feedback from you know customers at the show that had things they wanted to see. We had we've had feedback from customers and real user experiences. Many of the guys that are maybe watching that are watching this stream right now or that are going to watch it, um, you guys have shared feedback, and you know none of that. We we are not a company that wastes that. You know, every one of the comments, um, I, I deeply value when people share their experiences you know, whether they're negative or positive, honestly, the negative ones are worth more than the positive ones. Um, and uh, yeah, we listened to that. And, and we, what we were hearing was a lot of different things. We were hearing from guys that the original version needed to hold more crack fill, you know, like obviously you have, um, you have different size crack fill blocks, you've got 25 and 25 and uh, 30 pounders, you know, and we, we listened to that. That was one of the main things we optimized the kettle size internally to handle uh, two full 60 pound blocks. Um, we, we listened on the heat loss. You know, a lot of guys, you know, talked about, you know, you, one of the biggest things in a, in a direct fire melter is controlling how, how you utilize the heat from a burner, right? It, it determines how much is needed to melt it. It determines um, how, high you ha how hot you have to have it to be able to, to get a good melting effect, how much material is lost out of the lid or out of, uh, out of venting. Yeah. And that's another area that we, uh, we worked on. Um, we, we spent a lot of time listening, you know, on ergonomics, you know, and we spent a lot of time changing those pieces. So before I go into this, you know, I, I guess I should, should ask, I mean, do you, do you want to go for a deep dive into uh, all of this? Cause we're, we're going to go down a rabbit hole. All right, well, I'm telling tell you, we could be on here for a very, very long time talking about this stuff, but I know everybody's sitting there going, show me the meat, show me the meat. And uh, everybody, you're, you're literally about to see the RY10 Elite, which is the meat. And so you've got a machine here, everyone. Let me tell you this. Um, I've been a part of discussions with Lee in, in bringing this product to fruition as well. And I can tell you that from my standpoint, you know, people who are on the stream who know us at Asphalt Kingdom, our goal is to push out something that's quality, that's going to impact your business positively. And Lee and I have gone back and forth on this machine to really deliver not only a quality machine, but also get it at a price point that makes a lot of sense from an investment perspective. So, Lee, I know there's a rhino that's blowing smoke right there, and he's he's scuffing at the ground. Why don't you go over and show everybody the RY10 Elite? Sounds good. Uh, sounds good. So, I'll uh, let me know if you got a you got a good visual here, Judd. Fantastic. I, I, I'm on a. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to. Bear with me, guys. I'm trying to use the, the forward-facing camera on my phone Perfect. and uh, hunch back so I can show you the same thing. So maybe we'll start with the main kettle. So as I was mentioning and I started going down, you know, and maybe I'll kind of go from this route. You're going to see from my phone that the kettle has got a forward uh, forward lean to it. That's, that's actually on purpose. So the first thing about this kettle is you're going to notice if you're comparing to it, existing Rhino Works machine is it's, it's quite a bit larger. So we've increased the capacity by almost 30%. And as I was starting to mention, we've optimized it to handle two full, um, two, two 30 pound bricks. So 60 pounds loaded from empty. Um, and although it'll hold more than that once it's melted. The other thing you're gonna notice about the kettle is we've added a front latch onto the front of it for locking um, the the lid is folded under so that it actually makes a nice seal on the lower part of the kettle. And that's nice because ultimately the heat loss in this kettle is significantly less. You have, you have basically all three sides of the kettle um, mating down and you have a tiny slot for the agitator that's right here, um, which is really, really awesome. We were pro And then also for heat loss, 
you'll notice the Rhino Works logo, which I think you can see here. It's got this cool honeycomb um, that actually holds the logo together. There's two purposes from this. One, it looks really cool. Um, but two, it actually reduces the heat loss out of our side vents by almost 75%. Um, so it, it basically increases the heating efficiency of the burner. So another thing you're going to notice here is the valve. And this is one that this is probably the most valuable function um, that we've changed and one of one, definitely my pride and joy. So traditional valves, if you guys are looking at an old, um, an old RY10 valve or even an MA10 valve, the valve is on the outside of the kettle. You know, so Judd, I mean, I think you've probably got some experience with this. The challenge with the valve itself being outside of the kettle is crack fill normally will dry in, or will cool off inside the valve and you need to flash that with a torch to reheat it with this we, we call this the rhino valve and with the rhino valve i gotta interrupt you yep. i'll tell you why i gotta interrupt you that problem right there anybody who's ever pushed a push melter in the history of push melters that valve is a constant issue. The crack filler comes back to ambient temperature and it always is an issue to get going to be able to have that crack filler flow into the cracks. I had to interrupt you because that's something I really want everybody to pay attention to on this live stream. Go ahead, Lee. So I'm gonna talk about how this valve works. So we're gonna go inside the kettle and I don't know how good this is gonna show up because it is uh, admittedly dark in there. So bear with me for one sec, guys. Um, can anyone, I can't really tell Judd, so I'm gonna need your judgment. Are you able to see the valve at the bottom of this opening and closing? Yes. So the valve for Rhino Works keeps hot material inside the kettle. And when you open the valve, it allows hot material to flow. When you close it, all of the hot material drains out of the valve. So you're never holding any sort of cold material inside the actual valve. What this means is when you go to start up your machine from cold, your, your valve is ready to use almost immediately and does not require any preheating. So that's a, that's a huge benefit. Another huge benefit of the valve is serviceability. So everyone knows that, if, you know, from time to time, you've got to clean your valve. They get, you know, they, they're going to get plugged up. Well, this valve, as you can see here, has, you know, four lag bolts. It's as simple as removing those, those four lag bolts and that entire assembly slides right out. So for it, your valve itself is made up of a main housing in a pin and simply remove those four bolts, take off your control arm and you can actually pull that pin out. You can dip this entire mechanism in a solvent like a, some sort of a mineral spirits or a cutter yeah. and you can actually clean that valve solidly using a, a brush and some mineral spirits and load it back on, it'll be as good as new, you know, as soon as, uh, like w within 15, 20 minutes of, of servicing it. So that's a huge benefit because the uh, the old valves, you know, they're not easy to clean. You can't easily remove the mechanism. There's no good way of, of uh, you know, they, they, the preheat time is longer. And I guess the last benefit of this is because of the nature of this valve, the, um, you can see in the in on the inside it's kind of like a kind of like a car a car engine valve so it's got a 45 degree angle it it locks very tight so there's no there's virtually no leaking like it, it's all like comparatively to the old valves um you using water we get literally tiny dribbles the size of a nickel or a dime over a period of 15 20 minutes using crack fill um it's a, it's pretty well entirely eliminated so that's another huge benefit of the valve so I want to talk. I want to talk a little bit more here and then continue going. Another thing we did is the bander on the lower part of the machine. That bander is a little bit narrower, so we're about two and three quarters of an inch. We did that to be able to save a little bit of material, so you're not wasting material. And we still have that secondary drip guard. We still have that secondary drip guard mechanism in the event that there is, you know, a little bit of residual crack fill. Um, one of the nice things about the shoe is it is now fully bi-directional. You can spread crack fill forward and backwards. So if you get to the end of a crack and you have a little bit of leftover, you can pull it back over the crack until it's completely gone. And that way, when you're transitioning from a old crack or from a one crack to a new one, you're not dragging, 
you know, drippy, crappy material from one to next. Another cool feature we added. So on the front, you're going to see these funny looking uh, rhino lifts. These are actually machined aluminum handles. And the reason we put those on there is because when you're lifting onto a pickup truck, it's normally a two man lift. Guys didn't have anything to grab this thing by, you know, with these, with these handles, solid aluminum, um, you know, it's meant that one guy can lift the handles. The other guy can lift the handle bars and you can easily load this onto a, a taller trailer or a pickup truck um, a lot easier than, than not having them at all. There's a lid latch on the front, which is what I think I talked about earlier. And now we're going to move around to some more fun discussion points here. So the handlebars have been fully redesigned. You can see that they're no longer tube steel. They're actually these cool um, bent pieces of sheet metal that lap with each other. And the reason we did that is we added a slot at the bottom of the kettle here. And what this allows for is this bar height, you know, the, the distance from the bars, uh, hand, from the handlebars to the ground. On our old kettles, we had a lot of feedback of people talking about how they either liked it or they didn't like how high they were. Um, we've been able to compromise and give both. We've been able to not have to compromise and give kind of give way to both. So our handlebars are now adjustable from the same height as an MA, an MA 10, which is around 34 inches off the ground to bar height, or they can go up to, they can go up to 42 inches which is the same as the existing RhinoWorks uh, RY10 bar height. So, so the nice thing is, you know, regardless of guys, regardless of your height, um, we got you covered. You know, whether uh, whether you want something shorter, whether you want something taller, you can adjust this. Along with the handlebar adjustments, these control rod lengths also adjust, as do the agitation length. So, if you are putting the bar height down, you can adjust your control uh, control rod lengths as well. Another nice feature we added. So one of the big complaints we heard was fatigue from pulling this. This Can you guys see this spring right here on the control arm? So one of the big things we've heard from guys is, one, the distance of this control rod, and second, you know, how much tension it takes to pull that spring. Well, the good news is the new valve that we designed requires less than one-third of the spring tension of the old valve. That wasn't on purpose. That just happened to be a benefit. And as a result of that, you automatically need less, way less pull and way less spring tension, which is going to reduce fatigue. But the other things we've done to be able to like kind of add complete flexibility, can you see this bar right here where this where I'm pulling up? Can you see those pinholes? We've made the spring tension adjustable. So you can actually slide that pin up or down. If, if you're the type of person that, wants a lot of tension because you're using a thicker material or you want to just, you, you like the security of ensuring the valve shuts with force, you can actually adjust that tension. So you can make it stronger or lighter according to whatever you feel like you need. And at oh. the same time, yep. At the same time, you can also adjust the actual pull length of this bar so that if you've got, you know, if you've got basketball player size hands, you can leave it longer. Uh, if you're like me and everybody else and you've got regular size ones, you might want to, you know, have the pull a little bit shorter and you can easily adjust that at the center of the bar. So coming around to the, my favorite feature um, of our machine, the RY10 Elite Dash. So what we've done here is... Zoom in, zoom in a little bit there. Come on in. There you go. Perfect. How's everyone, how's everyone getting that? A1, brother. All right, so the dash is comprised of our starter button, the igniter, and then a nice machine bezel a digital thermometer that sits in the front. So why did we do this? If you look back at the bars in general, the idea was to have all of the controls for the machine right at the user's fingertips, whether it be agitator, whether it be the ability to monitor temperature, ignite the burner, control the flow valve, control the shoe, or push the machine forward. The goal was to have everything there. The dash is sort of at the center of that. So if everyone's everyone here assuming has owned an, MI, an MA10 or an RY10 in the past, the thermometers used to be mounted 
um, kind of right here on the kettle. We still do have a thermometer mount there, but now it's simply a probe. And the benefit for elite users is, you know, one, you don't have a glass filled, you don't have a glass thermometer if you're buying the elite. Um, you just have the digital thermometer. One, it's way more reliable. Uh, battery life on this thermometer, you could leave it on for six months and you still wouldn't kill battery. So for guys that are worried about that, that's not a problem. Um, but mainly it's reliability. You know, you know, you all these sensitive controls, a thermometer is a sensitive instrument. The igniter and the starter buttons, those are also sensitive. The thermocouple is, is right underneath this panel, another sensitive instrument. They're all well protected within the comfort of the handlebars and they're right at everyone's fingertips. So that's really the, um, the critical piece. When we move down here, you can see that there's a single conduit line that goes right into the burner assembly. The burner tray has been optimized. We're using the same reliable cast iron high pressure burner that's on the existing RY10 Pro. But what we've done is we've moved all the sensitive controls right up here into this panel. So, you know, as far as um, if anyone has owned an RY10 Pro, then they can relate to, you know, um, having the burner on the front of the machine and having the, having the propane lines go along the front. We wanted to bring everything to the back because it was so much better protected and it was within operator sight. So we've really removed a lot of the sensitive components on this machine to areas that are very hard to damage um, and also within the operator's sight. We, we have we have Dom Manzo who's on. Dom is a customer of ours and he's asking a question here. Is the digital display waterproof? Yes, so the digital display is fully waterproof. And if I unthread this piece here, I'll show you. You can see that there's actually, and guys bear with me, this is a this is still a this thermometer is a prototype, but you can see right here there's a rub there's a rubber gasket that surrounds it. And this housing goes in, if I don't know if you can see it, but you see that that round housing? That's a sealed plastic housing with rubber grommets. All the electronics in there are fully uh, are fully protected. Bear with me for one sec. I'm just going to put the cover back on, guys. No problems. Great question, John, by the way. Thanks for asking that. Yeah. And also, uh, what I was going to say, guys, is the other component that's nice about this is what I just showed. What I just showed down here with this uh, aluminum machined aluminum bezel. For changing the battery, all you do is unscrew that, that housing pops out, and you got a single AA battery that goes in the back. As I said, it's, a battery change on this should, should be annually or every second year. Um, it, it's, not a, it's not a common thing, and it is fully waterproof. Right. Hey, we've got Alex Lucic on here, too, uh, over at Black and Yellow. Um, he's on right now, too. He says it looks pretty great. So let's keep going through these things. Alex, thanks for joining us on this live stream. Feel, please feel free to share it out on your IG page, too. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Lee, let's keep going through this. Sure. So one thing I forgot to mention, guys, on the kettle is we did optimize by having the lid open towards the back. It used to open to the side. By having it open to the back, we've actually allowed for three-way filling. So if you're filling this thing from a trailer, it doesn't matter whether you pull up from the left side, right side, or to the front. You're going to be able to fill, fill the machine from three sides. All current MAs, including ours and Gingways, before this, they're all two-sided fills. It's because the, the kettle lid's always open um, towards, the, towards the side. Yeah. So that's yeah. a... That's a, that's, that's a that's note. That's a very interesting thing, right? Like, think about that for a second. If you pull your machine to a truck or trailer and you're filling it from a 30-gallon kettle, you, you really want to be able to access your, 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 your RY10 Elite from any angle just so it's quick and easy. Right up the front, boom, fill it. From the side, fill it. Depends where your truck's parked, et cetera. Um, for sure. Just, just quick, Alex is asking this question. I just want to jump in quickly because Alex has a really good question. So he says, one of the things that my guys were always talking about is being able to have the valve open without holding the lever down. Does this have this feature? Sorry if I missed it earlier. So I'll just go ahead and answer it. So what I'm understanding, Lee, from your presentation earlier is that you can adjust the tension in which you're pulling that lever by adjusting 
the uh, the adjustable spring load, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, although although it does although there's no permanent open option, you can adjust the spring or remove the spring entirely, um, and have zero tension. You know, if you if you want to use um, your own, if, if you want to take the spring off, it's a two second job to do it. And then literally you're using your own force to open and close it. It will stay open if you do that. So you can go to zero resistance if you choose to. We've set it up for minimal resistance, which means like literally the fatigue is, if on minimal setting, you can barely feel it. You know, it's, it's, it's less than 30% of a traditional um, MA for, uh, for closing power. So I hope that answers the question. You could do that if you want to, but uh, default setting on this is gonna be way less. Great, thank you so much. Okay, anything else to go over there? I, I, know, I know that uh, there's a lot to cover, but. Um... Yeah, so I, I guess another, a couple other notables and we'll kind of get on. We've added a torch holding bracket on the side here. Um, and one feature that, so basically that, this is still a pre-production model guys, so bear with me on this detail, um, but in final production, there's some minor adjustments we have to make to the to the um, to the control arm here for the uh, agitator. But yeah, the torch will basically mount to the side like you're seeing here, and that we have a we have a hose management system for the torch torch hose, so it keeps your your hose nice and neatly coiled, out of the way, not dragging, and tied to the inside of the handlebars. So that's another nice feature. You don't have a jumbled mess of hoses um, to worry about. Um, it that hose management's a really cool little add-on. I guess the other thing I would note is we've uh, we've optimized the distance of the propane cylinder from the kettle. So you'll notice there's a good size air gap there now to allow for more heat dissipation. Um, you know, we never had any you know issues with the RY10, but a lot of guys just mentioned that they wanted to see a greater gap um, and, and more more space between uh, the kettle and the uh, and the unit. So we did do that. And you'll also notice we added a heavy duty ratchet strap. So that's a two ton strap that's sized for the tank. This one's orange. The production one is actually black with the Rhino Works logo on it. So it, it adds a little bit of a bling to it. But what you'll see is this tank is rock solid. Like, like it doesn't matter if you're, you, you can trust going down the road that this thing's latched in place. It's not going anywhere. You don't have to worry about, you know, it vibrating loose. Um, I know that our old unit used chains and this ratchet strap feature will be making its way to all RhinoWorks products in the future. The Elite's just the first one that, uh, that we happen to get the design on. So that's, uh, that's sort of the core of it. I mean, obviously there's, there's, there's a lot more uninteresting stuff I could tell you guys um, from an engineering perspective that we did, just general optimization, sizing and, and the shape and, and stuff. But that sort of, in a nutshell, gives you most of what we've done um, to date. And <clears throat> we're pretty excited about, uh, about about being able to bring this to market. I mean, I can tell you, say this, and I'll say it in an unbiased way. This is the most advanced push melter on the planet. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Side to side with any other melter in the market, this is the machine. This was specifically designed for contractors that are used, looking to use push melters at their highest level. Um, I think, you know, there's a question that's popped in here and it's a great question because I know a lot of people ask this to us through asphaltkingdom.com. Aaron um, is asking, can this stay going while driving from job to job? So I can't legally tell you guys yes because uh, my insurance company uh, might have an issue if I, if I implied that it could and that you should, but uh, theoretically, yeah, it is possible. Um, like with, with the optimization we've made to this thing, it's, it's pretty well bulletproof. I am in no way advocating that you drive down the road with hot rubber in a machine. That would not be a safe thing to do. But well, the RY30 Pro, the dual burner enclosed, let's just say that I know some people on this thread right now that do do it. Again, we're not, we're not endorsing that. Uh, or, or advising on that, but there's there's the answer. Um, and and Don Mans is also on here too, and he thinks it's an awesome job to release. So congrats, man! And I know the I know everybody's so excited. So just to cover off a few things, I have some notes here. So just to summarize, 
this this is the RY10 Elite manufactured by Rhino Works. Everybody can see the logo there. And I know a lot of people are becoming more and more familiar with Rhino Works and making advancements in this industry, not sitting still and stagnant, but constantly taking that feedback and improving. The main uh, feature systems that, I'm, that we're seeing here that you've covered, one is the sealed burner. So sealed burner prevents flame out on windy days. It's more safe. You're not experiencing back flashes, pop, pumping raw propane into the machine, relighting and having those little explosions. You've got the Rhino Dash. The Rhino Dash is uh, electronic. It will show you the temperature in which the machine is operating at. You want to keep that between 350 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that correct? Yeah, whatever the manufacturer's spec is, but typically, uh, typically in around the 380 to 400 range is most crack builds. Right. So, so that other thing is on the Rhino Dash, you have the prime button to be able to prime with propane, and then you have your electric start. So that's like you no longer need to go around to your burner system, get down on your knees and have to figure out how to get that thing started from your knees. Which Correct. Is so, so the, yeah, so for the, for the old Rhino Works uh, RY10 Pro users and for the old, older design, the, the burner is in the front. So you'd have to, you have to actually ignite it in the front. And I, I think what we found is those controls essentially in this new design, um, they're just, they're far better protected you know, from, from being, you know, in yeah, operator yeah. site. Um, one other mentionable jet on the, on the burner is because of the heat loss improvements on the kettle, the heating efficiency on this one is actually better than the pro. So the, it's, it's, it's marginal uh, uh, when you, when you factor kettle size, but it is a superior, um, it is a superior performance to the, to the R 10 pro um, and far superior to any torch model when it comes to fuel efficiency and when it comes to melting time. Completely. That's awesome. The Rhino valve is, is manufactured from what exactly? What is the actual uh, valve? Yeah, so that, that valve was expensive as all hell and hard to justify. Um, yep. putting, when, when you look at the cost of the old valves to produce, uh, which is basically just welded and cut steel, this valve is like a solid piece of stainless. So it's a, it's a cast piece of stainless steel. Uh, it's machined to precise tolerances. And then the inner pin is also machined from a solid piece of uh, stainless as well. So that part, uh, that part was, was pricey, but I think it's, it's so worth it. I mean, it's such a cool feature. It's the fact that it can be removed, cleaned, the fact that it virtually eliminates leaking entirely, and the fact that preheating is no longer something you need to think about. Yeah, it's it's conversations with you. I mean, it was like, uh, I mean, listen, I've used the 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 RY10 Pros too and previous torch melters, right? And the issue is, is that the valve, the actual on and off close valve, was further on the outside, so it would come back to ambient temperature, and you'd have to literally liquefy that stuff by putting a torch on it. And it was a total yeah. pain in the ass. Whereas the valve is actually flush with the kettle itself, and then you have the valve that comes out off of it. And so the yeah. valve closes right up against the kettle, which means everybody, when you close that valve, all the hot crack filler leaks out. It's now an empty valve. And when you go to reheat your machine inside, it heats all that to liquid, and it immediately has an opening in that valve because it's all been emptied after you used it the last time. So that valve, that valve, that Rhino valve is a huge addition, will allow people to be way more productive. It's awesome. Well, cool. really and the other thing I didn't even mention is you, you have control – on that valve adjustment over how, how, how open you want it to be. So by adjusting your control arm positions, if you find that you don't need a full stream, you know, because you don't, let's be honest. I mean, for the most part, we can't melt, we can't apply crack filler at full stream pace. You know, most of the times we're applying it, it's going to be on a crack right. that's anywhere from even a one inch by one inch crack. You can't go near full pace. So the nice thing is, you know, you can adjust the tension. You can adjust the length, the pull length, and you can have minimal effort and have optimal flow out of that valve. That's incredible. And as that crack filler flows out of the valve into the rectangular shape, rectangular shaped scraper that's on a pivot arm, it will follow the contour of the asphalt. But if you happen to go forward and you get a bit of a puddle and you notice you missed a spot or you came off the crack, you can literally drag your crack filler backwards now because of the shape of that shoe. Right. Yeah, you, you can. It's it's nice. You can actually run a you can run a, a puddle in the shoe, so you can basically you know put excess crack filler, run it to the end of the crack, and if you end up with a little bit extra, um, you can pull it back. and And that's nice because then you're not having to go back. You're not having to go back over during the job. 
you can run a little bit of access, have a pool, uh, continue to drain in. And, you know, when you're getting to the end of the crack or you've reached the end, if you've got a little bit of access, drag it backwards to, uh, to, to make sure that, you know, all the access is gone before you move on to the next, the next crack. Right. The, the propane shelf too, there's now a gap between the kettle and the propane bottle. So that's nice to have that extra air for safety. It's nice. And um, also the, the rhino handles that are on it. What, you call them the rhino, rhino lifts and the rhino lifts on the front of it. I mean, we can, everybody can remember what it's like to lift a three wheel MA 10 or a rhino works three wheel unit or a RY 10 pro without those handles, you've got to grab those caster wheels. And I've put those, I've grabbed it by the front and put it, down in a truck bed or in a trailer and that caster wheel pinch my fingers so those so are really nice so it's especially problematic when you think in your when you've got a 160 pound machine with a full propane bottle add another 15 20 pounds and then throw on like 50 pounds of crack filler or 20 pounds of crack fill like left in your hopper like that's not a light lift um so those lifts are as comfortable as your as, as i think we could make lifts be relative to to the task I, I think we've done that and yeah i mean posture wise the guy that's lifting the very front of the unit typically speaking guy when guys are loading these they're either using a ramp in which this isn't a problem or if they're loading on a, on a higher pickup truck or trailer it's a two-man lift well one guy's standing in the bed and grabbing the tall handlebars so he doesn't break his back but the guy on the ground floor needs to be able to get the machine up high enough, um, you know, deload it on the truck. And I think having those lifts nice and low allows you to kind of get like a good deadlift on, you know, like it's, it's like lifting a, a barbell off the, off the ground and using your legs to get the height. So it should be a lot more comfortable of a lift. I mean, uh, everyone knows it's not comfortable loading, but these, these certainly are a lot better than having nothing to lift off of or having a, you know, a little bar that goes across the kettle, like, like what's on a lot of other melters. Right, for sure. Lee, while we're on right now, I'm just letting you know that we've had a lot of orders coming in right now during the stream that are coming in right now. I'm looking at the phone. So um, I do want to mention to everybody, this is a pre-sale unit. We're expecting shipping to be sometime in June. But if you go to the link in the uh, in the description, and also, I've also posted it in the thread here several times, feel free to go and get it on pre-order. Now, there's a special offer that we're providing everybody who is watching this, and we're also streaming this out to USA Seal Coders and on the Asphalt Kingdom page and a few other places. But certainly, um, what, I, what we wanted to mention, you know, not only, not only do we want to provide you with some kind of a special offer for being the first to buy it, but this is a huge thank you to everybody for being a part of this journey, a part of this mission, to really bring this most advanced push melter in the industry to fruition. And so, um, Lee, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about, I think you were talking about some engraving. Yeah, so uh, for, for guys that basically jump on the pre-order, you know, as Judd mentioned, we're, we're aiming at a June, you know, June delivery timeline on these. Um, they are, they're, there's admittedly, um, we expect to build probably somewhere between uh, 500 and a thousand units between now and June, um, you know, on top of the other machines that we work with. And for guys that basically take advantage of, of pre-order right now, um, we've, and I'm not, I'm not promising how long I'm going to keep this, but we're going to do some custom engraving. So if you look at the Rhino dash right now, we've got an elite on the Rhino dash, um, that's kind of done in our Rhino works honeycomb pattern. So we're going to do so we can see it a little better zoom in there yeah great so uh as a as a personalization for guys that uh, get involved we're going to offer that engraving with a custom uh, custom name for your company or for whatever you want on there um kind of as a as a custom perk and promo not not guaranteeing how long that lasts it will be around for today i promise you that um, I can't promise you it's going to live uh, live for the next three weeks because doing custom runs out of a out of a cutting machine of those does actually take a reasonable amount of time to stage and set up. So it it does cost us a bit, but I'll uh, I'll say for today you're safe, and uh, we we may continue to offer it for the next couple of weeks, but no guarantees. That's awesome. And Asphalt Kingdom is going to throw something in too. So Asphalt Kingdom, for anybody who's buying right now, um, for people who know, I'm one of the owners of Nasty Good. And so we'll throw in a Nasty Good hat 
And we're also going to take $100 off the $17.99 retail that we have listed right now down to $16.99. Um, that would be paid in advance, paid in full. So $100 off, $16.99, and also a NASA good hat, plus your company engraving coming in from RhinoWorks. That's huge value coming in. And thank you so much for being the first to order this. We also have a deposit option on AskBlockKingdom.com where you can put down 10%. And you will be first in line. It's a first come, first serve basis when June comes. Again, we're expecting a lot of orders to be in by then for this most advanced push melter on the planet. Um, so everybody, listen, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you have any questions at all, feel free to post them on the uh, comment thread here on the video. Definitely don't forget to check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out YouTube, check us out everywhere. And certainly know you can PM me, DM me, message me, email me anytime. And uh, Lee, man, thank you so much for working so hard for listening and for creating something that I know is a game changer. Super exciting. And I know you'll be at the National Pavement Expo too, coming in the end of January where this machine will also be featured. So really exciting, man. Thank you so much for taking the time today to share all this with everybody. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. All right, everyone, listen, you saw it, RY10 Elite, the very first video, very first, first push. Contact me with any questions. Thanks for being on with both Lee and I today. Take care.